Good evening and welcome to the special Vote 2014 edition of Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Tonight's show is a debate sponsored by Clean Elections. We'll hear from candidates competing for the Office of Arizona Attorney General. As with all of Arizona Horizon's debates, this is not a formal exercise. It's an open exchange of ideas, an opportunity for give and take between candidates for one of the state's most important offices. As such, interjections, even interruptions, are allowed, provided that all sides get a fair shake, and we will do our best to see that that happens. The Attorney General is the Chief Legal Officer for Arizona, representing state agencies and taking on cases involving civil rights, consumer protection, and complex business fraud. Two candidates are competing to be Arizona's top lawyer. They are Republican Mark Burnovich, a former Assistant U.S. Attorney and Arizona Department of Gaming Director, and Democrat Felicia Rotolini, who has served in the Civil and Criminal Divisions of the Attorney General's Office. Each candidate will have one minute for opening and closing statements. Earlier we drew numbers. Actually, we went ahead and decided this beforehand to see who goes first, and Felicia Rodolini gets that honor. Thanks, Ted. Good evening. I'm Felicia Rodolini, and I'm running for Arizona Attorney General because it's time to put the people first and return the focus of the Attorney General's office to its core mission of prosecuting criminals and protecting Arizona families. That's not a political job. It's a public safety job. And when I'm Attorney General, I'll rise above partisan politics and be an independent watchdog for the people of Arizona. I know this can be because I worked in that office for 13 years under Republicans and Democrats in the civil and the criminal divisions. I was the lead lawyer for the state against Arthur Anderson for the failed audits of the Baptist Foundation where we were able to return over $217 million to the victims of that fraud. My priorities will be prosecuting consumer fraud and financial fraud, going after the drug cartels and organized crime, protecting our children, going after sex, sex trafficking, and making sure we take politics out of the Attorney General's office. Thank you very much. For our next opening statement now, we turn to Mark Burnovich. Hi, I'm Mark Burnovich. I'm running for Attorney General. Some of you may not know me, and others may have seen our signs and not know how to pronounce my name, but that's okay. This is my first time running for politics, my first time running for anything. Um, but I grew up right here in Phoenix, attended public schools, first grade through the 12th grade, graduated from Shadow Mountain High School, and then went on to ASU. Met my wife while we were both working as prosecutors, raising our family here. I've spent my career working with law enforcement to keep our community safe. And whether that was working as a gang prosecutor, prosecuting the baddest of the bad, drive-by shooters, aggravated assaults, kidnappings, I've seen it all. I've stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the baddest of the bass. But I've also prosecuted cases in the federal system, including corrupt public figures and crimes that occurred in our Native American communities. I run a law enforcement agency, and my commitment and my promise to you is the same one I made to my family, that I will work hard every day to keep our family safe. All right, thank you both. Let's get it started, Felicia. Why you and not him? Well, because I want to take politics out of the Attorney General's office, and I will not be an ideologue, and my opponent will be. I've got 20 years, almost 20 years of working across party lines, protecting and serving the people of Arizona. My opponent, on the other hand, um, has already stated that he will make sure the Attorney General's office promotes an anti-choice uh, agenda. He's on record. Now, that's not the law of the land. And quite frankly, most Americans believe that, that every, women have the right to choose. That's what an ideologue does, not what a leader does. You want to respond to that, please? Sure. Um, I, I think that um, I think we're probably going to see this a lot tonight, Ted, that um, unfortunately my opponent is mischaracterizing my position. I've spent my entire career working with law enforcement, keeping our community safe. I've had a security clearance. I've served in the military. Not once when I was a prosecutor in the gang unit did I ever ask someone whether they were a Republican or Democrat. Not when I was a federal prosecutor. As the gaming director, I work with our tribal communities to resolve problems and aggressively pursue illegal activities in our communities. So many issues facing us aren't issues of right and wrong. They, excuse me, they're not issues of right and left, they're issues of right and wrong. And the problem is, as my opponent wants to make this a partisan race, she wants to make this about creating a straw man when it's simply not true. Ms. Well, let's be clear here. Mr. Brenovich has sent an email to his uh, database that he says he will be a pro-life attorney general. That's not the law of the land, and that's not the most important thing happening in the attorney general's office. In fact, the job of the attorney general is to prosecute financial fraud and protect Arizona families. I want to also point out that Mr. Brenovich took a break from being a prosecutor and made Arizonans less safe. He was a lobbyist and a state director 
for the private prison system and in 2006 actually uh, worked to kill a piece of legislation that would have prevented the most dangerous criminals from coming to Arizona. Please. You know, I'm glad this issue came up, Ted, because this is something we need to talk about. In fact, um, one of the things that I think is so unfortunate about politics today is so many people want to tear folks down instead of bringing them together. My opponent started running an ad today which completely mischaracterizes my past positions. I have spent most of my career putting people in prison, and yes, I worked for the Corrections Corporation of America trying to keep people there. This isn't a partisan issue. Both Democratic and Republican governors have used private prisons in order to incarcerate individuals. We have 7,000 inmates right now in Arizona private facilities that are Arizona felons. So the question is, if, we, if the legislature doesn't want to build more prisons, we have to have a place to incarcerate people. But is but is should voters be comfortable with someone as the attorney general who used to work for a private prison firm? Um, I know more about prisons, and it's why the, one of the reasons why I've put a lot of people there, and I've been endorsed by the Arizona Corrections Peace Officers Association. I think one of the key questions, though, Ted, and we should ask. I haven't accepted any contributions from the private prison folks, but my opponent actually has accepted contributions from people like Dennis Deaconzini, who's on the board of CCA, and Mira Yucci, you've accepted donations for. So she's she's comfortable taking money from the private prisons, but now she wants to criticize Arizona well, for using those facilities. That's making a big assumption that simply because I get a contribution from somebody, that means I'm somehow going to be beholden to them. That's a whole lot different. Mr. Brenovich can't get around the fact that his judgment was such that for profit, for his own uh, economic profit, he thought it was better to kill a piece of legislation that would bring killers, rapists into the state of Arizona. Now he's saying he wants to make Arizona safer. That doesn't make Arizona safe. And we know there have been escapes from the private prisons in 07 and 2010. I'm owning that ad. Yeah. You, Mr. Brenovich, are hiding behind mm. the special interest groups mm. that got you here today mm. with the $700,000 that uh, were the attack ads against the, that the Koch brothers did against Tom Horn. You can't say you're let's, going to be fair. Let's let him respond. Yeah. Okay, once again, I think my opponent didn't answer the question. She has no problem taking money from the private prison industry or even working in the banking industry or rep representing people that she used to regulate. She doesn't see any hypocrisy or any contradiction in that. I have worked my entire career putting people in prison, and there's a fundamental no, question here. But, 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 but real I quickly, you, you've, you've connected him now to private prisons yeah. and said that's a problem. It, yes. You have there are connections as well between you and a variety of folks here in Arizona. Why is that not a problem? Because I have received most of my contributions from over 4,800 individuals, and the average contribution is under $300. And my supporters range from Republican, Democrat, and Independent. And it's ridiculous to think that simply because I have received a contribution from someone, that that somehow is going to make me beholden to them. I'm just using the same logic she's trying to use. And so I think at the end of the day, Ted, what we need to appreciate is that there are 7,000 Arizona inmates in private facilities. And so if my opponent is so against private prisons, she needs to recognize two things. One, the biggest users of private prisons in Arizona is the Obama administration. There are people here on immigration calls and on federal there crimes. There you go. Two. Another way that I'm not an Obama ally. Can you okay. believe it, Mr. Brinovich? And, and if I can finish, Ted. And, and the second thing is, is that my opponent should answer the question, where do you want these 7,000 inmates to go? As a father and someone who's, who was brought up here in Arizona and has kids, I don't want those 7,000 inmates released in prison. And okay. what I don't also want, Ted, is the legislature to spend hundreds of millions of dollars that should be used for public education to fund additional public his, prisons. His question is, where do these inmates go? Well, first off, the inmates that he w w allowed into this state through this legislation are from Hawaii and from uh, Alaska. So we're not talking about private prisons where we're putting Arizona convicts. We're talking about private prisons that are here and we're importing the worst of the worst. The legislation that he killed would have simply prevented those kinds of criminals from coming to Arizona. All right. I, I, we got this all started by me asking why you and not yes. him. I want to, why you and not her? Um, Ted, because I think it's important to have an attorney general that's going to work hard every day to protect our families and communities. As I said, as someone that grew up here, as someone that's worked as a prosecutor in both the 
federal courts and in the state courts. I'm the only person that's handled violent felonies, can, violent felony cases. I'm the only person that's actually tried jury trials in both the federal and the state system in criminal cases. I'm the only person that's actually tried public corruption cases. I'm the only person that's tried cases involving our Native American communities in Indian countries, including the largest casino robbery in Arizona history. Folks expect someone with experience because the stakes are too high. With everything going on in this country and the Obama administration about to grant amnesty to millions of people, we need an attorney general who's going to push back May against I the respond? federal government and also has the experience to hit the ground running from day one. Mr. Brenovich is running for county attorney. That's where he got his experience doing street crimes. That's not the jurisdiction of the Attorney General's office. You even said so in your introductory remarks. The job of the Attorney General is to do statewide financial fraud. And Mr. Brenovich's background and experience is great if he wants to work in the county attorney's office. Here's the, here, let me set the record straight on my record. I was doing jury trials in the civil arena before Mr. Brenovich was out of, was out of law school. He's never done jury trials. I was in the criminal division of the Attorney General's office. He was not. I was in the financial fraud and public corruption uh, section of that office. We didn't do street crimes. We did complex fraud. I then spent hundreds of hours in the civil division doing, doing trials where I returned hundreds of millions of dollars to victims of fraud. Oh. Let me just finish by saying the Arizona uh, Republic, a very conservative editorial board, looked at my record, looked at his record, and endorsed me. And in fact said that my record and my background is more germane and more relevant to let's, what the Attorney General's office does. Let's get a response. Yeah, you know, I think that, um, you know, as someone that's um, been involved in um, hiring, firing, running an agency that actually came in under budget, one of the first things that we always talk about is before you look at people's references or the recommendations, you look at the resume. And I think there's a reason why my opponent doesn't want to talk about her resume and complete lack of criminal tr trial experience, the, her complete lack of handling any violent felons, I will leave it to the viewers to decide when we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the cartels that are smuggling drugs and people into this country, do you want someone that needs on-the-job training or do you want someone that stood there in the courtroom and faced them down and won those convictions? Do we want someone, and just and let me just add also, is that you know, I just was meeting with some rural sheriffs today. There's folks like uh, Sheriff Mash Masher in uh, Yavapai County. When there are complex um, violent crimes, when there are conflict cases, including homicides, aggravated assaults, those cases do come to the Attorney General's office, and complex organized crime cases are also handled by the Attorney General's office. Still saying you don't have the experience yeah, for this well, job. Let me go back to the fact that um, Republicans like Rick Romley, the former Maricopa County attorney who actually gave Mr. Brenovich his first job, actually, my is first endorsing job was delivering me. papers for the is Arizona Republic. Excuse me, is endorsing me. That's why I've got all of the law, enforce, law enforcement community behind me, the Arizona Police Association, the Fraternal Order of Police. Again, Mr. Brenovich need, if, is talking about street crimes, not the types of crimes that are prosecuted in the Attorney General's office. And let me tell you something else. Most of what the Attorney General's office does is on the civil side, representing state agencies. When I was in the Attorney General's office, I represented three different state agencies. I have the experience and the knowledge of the business community that will make me the better Attorney General, and so does the Arizona Republic. Attorney so. General is obliged to protect and defend all of Arizona's laws, all of yes. those laws. Are you prepared to do that even if some of those laws you disagree with, even if some of those laws you may think are unconstitutional. Absolutely. I think that as the Attorney General, the law is what the law is. Uh, former Attorney General Bob Corbin, Arizona's longest serving Attorney General, who endorsed me, he was very fond of saying this, what does the law say? I have said, and I've consistently said this, that I will be there not only to defend Arizona's laws, regardless of what I personally think, but I will be there to defend us against the overreach of the Obama administration. And when we see what's happening, um, I always like to say that if you don't like the law, change the legislature. In Arizona, we have an initiative process. You can change the governor, but as Attorney General, you have to enforce the law, period. Same with you, yes, even absolutely. laws you don't agree with. Even laws I don't agree with, I will enforce them. If 1062 comes around the bend again, you gonna help uh, protect that and defend that? I will defend it, however, I will go on record again that it's not, the, that it is unconstitutional and that it's not in the best interest of the people of Arizona. That is an opportunity for the Attorney General to show a leadership position. That's the reason why Mr. Brenovich is an ideologue. He has the backing 
of the Kathy Harrods, the Center for Arizona Policy, the anti-women, anti-gay, anti-immigration groups that are hopeful that he'll get in there because they need someone like him who will do their bidding and make sure these ideological uh, laws that are bad for the state, that Governor, uh, Governor Brewer, Brewer vetoed, should not happen. We are talking about why oh. Mr. Brnovich is wrong for the state of Arizona. They're going to do their bidding, um, apparently? You know, th this is really, it's, it's almost comical, quite frankly. Um, uh, my, my, frankly, what I said when 1062, when I was asked about it, I would said, as Attorney General, I would defend the law. Now, my opponent said it was unconstitutional, she kind of hemmed and hawed, and now she's apparently come around to that position. I guess that's because she's spending a lot of money on polling, according to her, uh, her latest finance report. And Ted, I think that's the problem Arizonans have with politicians. One, they just try to attack the other person, and then they try to use polls to tell people what they want to hear. I do know this, is that when President Obama sued us over 1070. Um, my opponent was silent. She was running for attorney general in 2010. When her union bosses um, wanted to boycott Arizona, she said nothing. I think we Arizonans want an you attorney know, that general that's going to stand up for Arizona. Let's not go true. to this UFCW thing and yeah. regarding a, a connection there yes. and them wanting to boycott Arizona and what, you took a donation. What, what's that all about? You know, I don't know because I was on record since day, uh, at the very beginning that I would defend SB 1070. In the debates here on, on your show, I said that. And you know what? You have misrepresented me in so many ways, Mark. And to say that I'm an Obama ally is just ridiculous. You know who's reading the polls? It's Mr. Brenovich. He ran against Tom Horn because he was the second most unpopular person in the state, according to the polls. And now he's running, trying to run against Obama because he is running lower than Mr. Well, Horn. I, I, so I, this is a man who follows the polls. This is a man who, other than the dark money coming in, would not be here today. You know what, I'll tell you what, Ted, no one worked harder than the primary than I did. You know, the mathematically you got about a one, two percent chance of beating someone in your own party. But I took it on because it was the right thing to do. When I was traveling all over the state, putting 50,000 miles in my car, that was something that we did, not something else somebody else did. And let me just say this, when I was a prosecutor, there was an old saying we had, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. And so my opponent can sit there all she wants and say that I'm misrepresenting your record, but she first became a Democrat when Jimmy Carter was president. You've been a Democratic for four, for four decades. Your campaign manager is the former executive director of the Democratic Party. You yourself have given money to people like Al Frank and Rahul Garhalva, the and, who's who, the again, rogues gallery of the left. Let's go back so, to the conservative editorial board of the Arizona Republic that called Mr. Brenovich out for doing this very thing, for being political, for being a typical politician by trying to say that I'm an Obama ally when my 20 year record of in, in the trenches is all about working across party lines and all about doing the right thing for the people of Arizona. But she that, was unwilling to stand up and sit, criticize Obama when he sued Arizona. And you talk about bipartisanship, you're donating money to liberal Democrats. You know, let's talk Those about the, the issues. Could we talk about the we, issues? We're trying to talk about the issues. And one of the issues that I've heard now a couple of times from you is this idea of federal overreach. You are going to fight federal. What, what does that mean? I think that one of the things the attorney general must do is represent Arizona in the overreach of the federal government. Um, in states like Arizona, which so much of our land is controlled by the federal government, we need an attorney general that understands property rights. I have written amicus briefs and I'm very familiar with the property rights. We need to make sure that when there's carbon killing, um, there's regulations that are going to destroy jobs here in Arizona, we have an attorney general that's going to fight back. When Right now in eager Arizona, they just had to shut down a mill where they lost 17 jobs because the bureaucrats and the federal government won't let us thin our forest. And when you don't thin your, thin your forest, Ted, you have bigger forest fires. Yes. You, um, and so we need to make sure that whether it's the Endangered Species Act, whether it's forest management, or whether it's these uh, uh, new CO2 rules are being promulgated by the Obama administration, that we have an attorney general that doesn't just pay lip service, but understands those issues and will fight back against lip Obama. Service. Lip service. Mr. Brenovich, during the primary, was giving lip service to, say, to going after the federal government. Before the primary, I testified in front of the Arizona House uh, Energy Committee on my opposition to the EPA rules, the Clean Power Plan. I met with the stakeholders, the utilities. I drafted and uh, submitted my written uh, testimony and I'm on record. That's what the Attorney General is supposed to do. Go on record, be substantive, and take action. 
I have always stated that I will go after the EPA for these rules. They're draconian, and I know better than anyone the federal government overreach from my years regulating the banking community. During those years, I had to face down the federal government, and I've seen up close and personal the one-size-fits-all arrogant arrogance. Mr. Brenovich continues to lie about my positions on these things. We've been in debates for several weeks now. I've never wavered from the fact that I was going to fight the EPA and I will fight federal overreach. And I'm on record regarding President Obama that I don't support his alleged uh, no. executive, com executive order that he may do in lieu of comprehensive immigration reform. That's where we should go. Immigration in general your position on this, and again, your position as the Attorney General. Well, I will tell you what, Ted, no one understands immigration better than I do. I mean, my mother had immigrated to this country from the former Yugoslavia, where she had to live through the horrors of World War II and then communism. And it's one of the reasons why I'm running for Attorney General, because we were instilled with a great sense that we have an obligation to give something back to this country. And so I think that immigration is something that this country needs, but at the same time, we are a nation of laws. We must secure the border. And so when we have there cartels- There is someone who is talking from an ideological standpoint. Securing he the border? He has yet to answer what his plan I will just, be to secure uh, the border. Okay, let's, let's. I, what, what I've, you know, last time we were on here, I think with Mr. Horn or one, during one of the debates, I made it very clear. One of the things the Attorney General must do is not only use that bully pulpit of that office to make sure that the, we force the federal government to do its job, and whether that's suing the federal government over SCAP funding, whether it's suing the federal government for not securing the border, but more importantly, I have a history of going after the gangs and the cartels. We need to make sure that we cut off the heads of the snakes and aggressively prosecute Here's my border gangs. plan, Ted. Can I finish, please? please? please. Uh, make sure Quickly. that we are going after the cartels that are smuggling drugs and people in this country. Additionally, we have to use Title 13, the criminal statutes, and go after Ted, the financing aspect, this the money laundering that's going on. Okay. I have already gone after the companies that have facilitated illegal immigration as superintendent of the Department of Financial Institutions. In my first eight months as superintendent, I find the money transmitters, the folks who uh, sent wires to the Coyotes, over $3.5 million uh, for facilitating human smuggling and violating the rules designed to stop the flow of cash to these human smugglers. Here's my plan. You're going. As a, top, as a top law enforcement officer, I'm going to go after the drug cartels, and I'm going to prosecute them and put them in jail and get heavy sentences. Do you think secondly, those are violent people? Secondly, secondly, do not interrupt me, Mr. Brenovich. I have the floor. Secondly, we have to go over, go crush their financial backbones. I know how to follow the money, and we need to use the RICO laws and the forfeiture laws to hit them where it hurts and shut down the flow of money. What's wrong with those ideas? Uh, those are the, sim the same ideas that I just said about going after the cartels and the finance financial part. My question was, is do you not think the cartels are violent? She tries to minimize my experience dealing with violent criminals. These I'm are what the cartels are doing. I'm minimizing the fact that going after dangerous criminals is the job of the county attorneys who have ex original jurisdiction for that. And there's over 500 assistant county so are you attorneys. Going to go after the there's over 500 hundred assistant county attorneys in both the Pima County and Maricopa County that do those violent crimes. What he doesn't want to touch is the fact that he's never prosecuted financial fraud. He's never returned monies to victims of fraud. He's never shut down scammers. He has never worked in the areas that are the economic drivers well, of okay. this economy. I need to address that, Ted, because you know what? I was an assistant United States attorney. I've gone after corrupt public figures. I've handled financial crimes, including tax evasion crimes, financial crimes involving casinos. Once again, what my opponent doesn't want to talk about is the fact that she's never tried a criminal case in front of a jury in her entire career, a criminal case, and she's never handled one violent felony. And she also doesn't want to talk about, she talks a lot about Department of Financial Institutions, Dad. Maybe she should start explaining why Arizona, when she started there, we were 21st in mortgage fraud and we went to fourth. So we saw a dramatic increase in the number of mortgage frauds, people you know, losing their assets while she was at DFI. This of Mr. Brenovich. You see, what he does is he goes after people uh, with a, a barrage of accusations, and then he has to retract. When he was the director of the Department of Gaming, he had a debacle in the global access cash, cash access, global cash access case. That case, his department bungled. He. Uh, had outrageous allegations regarding people that he denied licenses to. 
Uh, they, they went after, they, he could not respond, and he sued, he was, let me, let me step, let me say this again. Let quickly, me, we gotta yes, go quickly, because we, we're running out of time. Well, he, here's what Mr. Brenovich did. He refused to provide public records to people who had the right to find out the allegations against him. He was sued in federal court, he was, okay, and he, and the judge ordered him to pay over $100,000. Please, $100, we, got, we run out of time. Yeah, absolutely. This was a case involving that I inherited and was bongled from the previous administration and the Attorney General's office. There was law enforcement records from other law enforcement agencies that we were not supposed to have, the department did, and I thought it was important to protect law enforcement, to protect those records, again, because they weren't a, they the weren't records line, of our agency. But she ended up letting the people he believed should never she, have a license, once again, a license to do gaming, they got a license, oh, and he know, compromised what, the department. Final words, so final I, words. I guess my opponent's still not gonna explain why mortgage fraud increased while people were compromised and they lost their money while you, you were know, director no. of DFI. When I was the head of that department, I did more for mortgage fraud to than anyone else in the country. Okay, if you want to address these the issues in your closing statements, that's fine, but we've got to get to closing statements. Each candidate will now give a one-minute closing statement. And going in reverse order of the opening remarks, we start with Mark Burnovich. Thank you, Ted. Um, I, it is my pleasure to be here. I would urge people to go to my website, mark4az.com. You can always find out more about the campaign. Um, you know, frankly, sometimes some of these accusations, my opponents create a website, she's running negative ads because she doesn't want to talk about her record. She wants to attack me. I think most Arizonans are tired of that. They want an attorney general that's gonna work hard every day to protect our families, to protect our communities. I grew up here and I got into this race not because I want to be somebody, but because I want to protect our families and our communities. I want to leave this a better place for my kids and their kids. I've had a history of working as a prosecutor. I'm a member of the State Parks Board. I served in the military. Um, I have the support of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce. I have the support of the National Federation of Independent Businesses representing more than 7,000 small business owners. We have a broad coalition of support and I would like your vote as well. Urge you to join me. You can find out more information at Mark for easy.com. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And for our final closing statement, we turn to Felicia Rodolini. I've spent close to two decades prosecuting criminals and protecting Arizona families. And despite what my opponent is trying to say, I've shut down unscrupulous companies, I've thrown people in jail, and I've returned hundreds of millions of dollars to victims of fraud. Protecting and serving the people of Arizona is my passion. That's why I have the endorsements of the Arizona Police Association, the Fraternal Order of Police, the ASCOPs. I have the firefighters. All of the sworn law enforcement groups in the state of Arizona are endorsing me. And that's why I have the endorsements of business groups, Republicans and independents, like Maricopa County Attorney Rick Romley, who again, knows my background, knows my experience, and is endorsing me. This is a crucial election. You've heard it uh, from Mr. Brenovich. He wants to skirt around the issues. He's an ideologue. He'll use that office as a battering ram for his own political agenda and for the dark money special interests that are doing his bidding. Go That's to my website, FeliciaForArizona.com, and see my vision. All right, and that is it. Thank you both. Thank you for joining us as well. That's it for now. I'm Ted Simons. You have a great evening.